Which country has committed the worst war crimes of all time? It might not be who you think, and you'd be surprised how many good guys made the list. What is a war crime exactly? Well, it's a violation of the laws of war that leads to criminal responsibility beyond the standard killings of war. After all, if every killing in war was a war crime, they would have a backlog of millions of trials for both sides. But the crimes that can count as war crimes include killing or torturing of prisoners of war, targeting civilians, looting or pillaging conquered territory, killing surrendered soldiers, or committing acts of genocide or ethnic cleansing against conquered populations. But the concept of war crime itself is rather new. The codification of international law about the conduct of war didn't happen until the 19th century, with the Union Army in the Civil War having one of the first, and the Hague Conventions in 1899 and 1907 creating the first for international war. After World War II, when we saw the first widespread war crimes trials, the Geneva Convention formalized the process and created the international war crimes legislation that exists to this day. But that still lets some people off easy. Many of the worst crimes that would be war crimes today happened long before these laws were on the books, during the age of colonialism. So in judging the worst war crimes of all times, we have to look at them too, even if the leaders of the time got off scot-free or were even considered national heroes. So let's begin the list with two old-time rivals. Number 10. North Korea and South Korea We'll kick it off with a tie. Today, it's easy to assume that the Korean War was a black and white affair. After all, when you look at the two countries today, one is a thriving democracy with a rich tourist scene, and the other is a militaristic dictatorship where only one family has ruled it since inception and public mood and behavior is strictly regulated. With North Korea seemingly threatening new conflicts every few days, the Korean War seems like a distant memory, but it was a bloody civil war and both sides committed terrible atrocities against the other, even before the US got involved on South Korea's side. And those atrocities were against their own peninsula mates and others. North Korea lived up to its brutal reputation from the start. North Korean troops were infamous for their no-quarter policy against the American troops. In one case, five airmen in a truck convoy were ambushed, and their bodies were found with over 20 stab wounds each, likely from bamboo spears. Those who were taken alive were usually stripped, tortured, and eventually murdered by their captors. No one was safe. When a non-combatant chaplain was captured attending to American troops at the Chaplain Medic Massacre, he was killed in the middle of administering the last rites to a dying soldier. But the South Koreans are no slouches to brutality either. South Korea during the Korean War wasn't the country it is today. It was a military dictatorship, and it was deeply paranoid about North Korean incursions. This led to brutal oppression of communist activities who were often imprisoned under poor conditions. When the North Koreans invaded, President Sing Man Ri took hundreds of political prisoners who had been imprisoned and ordered them executed, a mass killing of over 7,000 who were buried in mass graves. This was initially considered North Korean propaganda when alleged. Today, horrifying photos of the massacre have been leaked from US classified documents. But sometimes all it takes is a few years to launch a country into infamy. Number 9. Serbia When the Soviet Union fell, Yugoslavia was one of the many countries that was released from their sphere of influence, but unlike the others, it didn't stay one country. It split into multiple nations, including Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia. The massive former nation was filled with ethnic and religious conflicts, and it was not willing to give up any of its territory. The country had two separatist movements in what was then still known as the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. These movements advocated for the independence of Montenegro and Kosovo, both of which had significant Muslim populations. And while the conflict had been brewing for a while, the new president of Serbia in 1991 planned to end the conflict in his favor, permanently and it would become a world affair. Under the infamous Slobodan Milosevic, every independence movement was met with massacres. Serbian forces began taking mass numbers of prisoners in the Croatian war, with reports of torture and abuse in the prison camps. 35 cities were razed to the ground, and 3 million landmines were left behind. The same horrors followed in the Bosnia war, with several concentration camps being built. Most infamously, Serbian troops were found to have committed an act of genocide in Srebrenica in 1995 massacring over 8,000 Bosnia men and boys as part of an ongoing series of killings against the Muslim population of former Yugoslavia. But the worst was yet to come. These crimes were met with horror, but by 1999 Milosevic and his army had begun a full-on campaign of ethnic cleansing against Albanian Muslims in the territory of Kosovo. The Serbian army would systematically move from village to village, burning civilian property, robbing and killing civilians, and sending many people over the borders to Albania and Montenegro. Dozens of massacres were eventually exposed, and the horrors were so great that NATO decided to intervene, launching a bombing campaign that brought an end to the massacres, deposed Milosevic, 
and eventually led to him and many of his generals facing trials for war crimes. Today, Kosovo is independent, but many Serbians consider Milosevic a martyr and hold a deep, unabiding hatred for NATO and America. Now, let's head back. Way back. Number 8. Spain Spain has mostly stayed out of international conflicts for a long time, but back in the 15th century and beyond, it was the world's most powerful naval empire and the first to cross the Atlantic for colonial purposes. As soon as they landed in the islands of North America and beyond, the leadership had exactly one question. How much can we get out of this strange new land? That meant gold and other national resources, but it also meant land and people. In the grand colonialist tradition, as soon as Spanish fleets set foot in the Caribbean, Mexico, or South America, they decided that everything that was there belonged to Spain or any local was now a slave or completely disposable, and they had the perfect soldiers to carry out the missions. They were called conquistadors, and they were among the most feared figures of the 16th century. Starting with Christopher Columbus and followed by infamous figures like Cortes and Pizarro, they laid waste to countless ancient cultures including the Inca, Maya, and Aztecs. Another culprit in this mass genocide was disease brought straight from Europe which the natives were powerless against, and the Spanish did nothing to stop. But the Spanish also committed multiple massacres against men, women, and children. When they wanted control over a tribe or an empire, they would frequently kidnap the leader and hold them hostage, essentially having him hand over the empire at knife point. So why aren't they higher? Simple. The Spanish Empire burned hot and fast. They would ultimately be eclipsed by other powers we'll see later on this list. As their colonial holdings dwindled, the war crimes they were responsible for did as well, and most of Spain's most infamous crimes in the modern era happened against their own people. In the brutal civil war of the 1930s, both the fascist and anarchist movements were responsible for violence. But while the Republican side was mostly responsible for attacks against powerful institutions, Franco's nationalist movement was infamous for its brutal repression of anyone deemed to be insufficiently loyal to the regime. Mass graves were found in the years after the war, and it's only due to Franco's neutrality in the Second World War that the fascist leader isn't more widely known as a monster. Now, let's get to the big guns. Number 7. The United States Alright, let's get it over with. This country has a lot to answer for in its early days, although it did inherit many of its worst crimes from the colonial period. The system of chattel slavery doesn't exactly qualify as a war crime, although it does qualify as a crime against humanity. However, many of the early conflicts with Native Americans on U.S. soil led to brutal massacres. Most infamously, President Andrew Jackson was a big fan of forced transfers of Native populations, including the Trail of Tears, where it's estimated as many as 15,000 Natives died. The Civil War also led to no shortage of massacres, most infamously the hanging of 38 members of the Dakota tribe after the U.S.-Dakota War of 1862. But as the U.S. took a more global approach, things would escalate. After about a hundred years of existence, the United States began to look more like an empire with all the associated brutality. When the U.S. picked up the Philippines after defeating Spain in a war, their commander in the territory had a no-prisoners rule and ordered a massacre. It's believed as many as 5,000 people died in the initial massacres, and war crimes would continue for the duration of the occupation. During the Banana Wars in Haiti, the Americans were infamous for their harsh treatment of captives, including massacring rebels and torturing people for information, although their crimes in Haiti would pale in comparison to another global power. And as the U.S. was pulled into larger conflicts, they didn't always abide by the laws of war. During World War II, the United States was accused of firing on Japanese survivors and lifeboats, and there were many reports of surrendered Japanese soldiers being killed. Some would be accused of taking trophies from Japanese bodies and of abusing Japanese women. As massacres of U.S. POWs were common in Europe and the Pacific Theater, the U.S. soldiers would often retaliate in kind. And then, of course, there's the two earth-shattering bombs that helped to end the war. Many say the mass killing of civilians at Hiroshima and Nagasaki count as war crimes, but the United States claims they were legitimate military targets. And it didn't stop there. The U.S. bombing campaign during the Vietnam War was infamous for its use of incendiary weapons, which led to heavy damage and civilian casualties. While there was no official policy of killing civilians, many commanders were known to have killed prisoners or even targeted villages of civilians. Justified, they said, because you never know who was a Viet Cong agent. Most infamously, at least 350 armed civilians were killed in the My Lai Massacre, which led to the only conviction of atrocities in the war. In future wars like Afghanistan and Iraq, U.S. soldiers would also be accused of massacres and torture of prisoners, although those were usually met with much harsher condemnations and military trials than past wars. And their former rival could be no less infamous. Number 6. Great Britain Probably the largest imperial power of all time, it used to be said that the sun never sets on the British Empire. 
Britain wasn't the most brutal colonial power, but during its imperial age, it was well known for brutally punishing insurgencies and using famine to control the population. This was in far-flung colonies in Asia and Africa, as well as much closer to home in places like Ireland and Scotland. The first case where they committed crimes officially considered war crimes was in the Second Boer War in South Africa. The British troops would destroy towns, massacre livestock, loot villages, and open concentration camps for both Boer rebels and Native Africans, leading to over 40,000 deaths. And then came the World Wars. Britain is generally not considered the aggressor in either of the two world wars, especially the second, but that doesn't get them off scot-free. While the use of chemical weapons was prohibited since 1899, both sides used them extensively in the First World War. The Royal Navy would also regularly kill unarmed soldiers whose ships had been sunk. During World War II, Britain would regularly violate the neutrality of countries trying to stay out of the war, including invading and occupying Iceland as a base against the Germans. Looting and torture of POWs were not uncommon. The British took heavy bombing against civilians during the war, and they returned it just as brutally in the bombing of Dresden, Germany, which killed 25,000 people. The British won the war with the Allies, but its time as an empire was slowly coming to an end. The years after the war would be characterized by the slow collapse of the British Empire, but not before more crimes happened around the world. In a conflict in what's now Malaysia, the British suppressed dissidents by placing people in internment camps and massacred 24 villagers of Batang Kali. A few years later in Kenya, Britain would brutally put down the Mau Mau uprising, which led to the internment of over 160,000 people and the hanging of over a thousand suspected rebels. And while the British military is much less active than it used to be, Irish people who remember the Troubles probably have their own bill of indictment to provide. Their neighbor across the channel might have even more to answer for. Number 5. France France was the third prong of the great European empires during the early colonial era, and it held on to its colonial holdings for a long time. France liked to style itself as a great civilizing power, but the reality was very different. While it offered citizenship to its subjects on a basic level, in reality those would be treated as second-class citizens who served to enrich the French colonists. For those who went along with the program, they could expect poor treatment, but for those who rebelled, that was usually where France's fangs came out because independence movements tended to be met with brutal resistance. Algeria had been under French rule since 1852, and the country had around 100,000 European settlers in it. While initially the country was ruled by civilians, it was taken over by a military government soon after, and unrest increased. The French conquest led to brutal repression of the natives, with the European population doubling in only 10 years and land being taken from natives and transferred to the new settlers. It's estimated that war, massacres, disease, and famine led to the death of one million people within the first three decades of the French conquest, and Algeria would not gain its independence until the conclusion of a brutal war in 1962. But one country's fate might have been even worse. Haiti had been occupied since the 17th century, and was called saint Domingue back then. It was heavily a slave state, with most of the indigenous Taino population being dominated by the French and dying in massive numbers within 30 years of the occupation. The French then imported large numbers of slaves from abroad. It's no surprise that this led to a slave rebellion, and France found itself overwhelmed in 1791, coming not long after the French Revolution threw the country into chaos. French colonial forces brutally tried to repress the slave rebellion, including possibly the first use of chemical weapons to massacre a large group of prisoners by filling a ship's hold with toxic gas. Haiti eventually did gain its independence in 1804, but not before being left with a massive bill by France in exchange for the damage that the rebellion did. But one colonial master might have slipped under the radar. Number 4. Belgium Wait, Belgium? That little country in northern Europe that rarely seems to start any trouble? How did they get up this high? You got it, colonialism. Specifically, possibly the most brutal colonial regime of all time in what was known as the Congo Free State. The name was an oxymoron. The territory that is now the Democratic Republic of Congo was an absolute dictatorship under the rule of the King of Belgium, King Leopold II. This ruthless leader saw the colony as simply just a place to harvest rubber, which was extremely valuable at the time. All the resources there belonged to him in his eyes, and so did all the people who essentially became the world's largest enslaved workforce. While initially this pseudo-colony was run by a supposed philanthropic organization and was an unprofitable mess handled by administrators, things changed once Leopold saw the opportunity for profit. He nationalized all vacant land, sold it off to private corporations, and gave them free reign to use the forced labor and abuse workers to maximize rubber production. These employees had far more to worry about than a negative performance review. 
Punishments for failing to meet quotas included mutilation, like having hands cut off, up to whole villages being raised as punishment for failure. And as time went on, these atrocities escalated. Under Leopold's rule, the Congo Free State was plagued by illness, with diseases like smallpox and dysentery ravaging the native population. Rebellions were punished severely, famine was common, and children would be kidnapped and put to work regularly. While Catholic missionaries ostensibly ran schools for the children, these were usually abusive institutions that did little more than train them to work in the rubber trade or serve as soldiers. All these effects together led to a dramatic decline in the Congolese population, leading many people to consider this one of the worst genocides in human history. In this one colonial holding, it's estimated that Leopold II might have killed as many as 10 million people. Now let's head north. Number 3. Russia there is a reason Russia is one of the most feared countries in the world. Its invasions were infamously brutal all the way back to the Tsarist era. But during the Soviet era and beyond, they really stepped up the war crimes. The Soviet Union began with the execution of the royal family, including the Tsarist children, leaving the citizens of Russia and the states it conquered subject to repression and famine under the new regime. Jewish populations were frequently subjected to government-sponsored pogroms, but during the world wars they were almost as brutal as the Axis powers. They occupied areas including the Baltic states and western Ukraine, and would engage in mass conscription of civilians who were often used as cannon fodder. And if you found yourself under Soviet occupation, it would be a long, brutal road ahead. While the Soviets did ultimately help win the war for the Allies, they had previously been aligned with the Nazis, and a joint invasion of Poland led to many atrocities. Soviet forces were infamous for their scorched earth policy, which saw countless villages burned and civilians massacred. Those taken prisoner had a high fatality rate due to the brutality of the Soviet labor camps. In the years after the war, the Soviets took many new territories, and Stalin's policies of collective farming and dekulakization led to the death of millions. Ethnic groups in the massive USSR were frequently oppressed and forced to conform to Soviet norms, with some of the major victims being the Greeks, Finns, and Soviet Jewish populations. The Soviet Union eventually fell, but the terror didn't stop. Boris Yeltsin's short reign was less militaristic than past ones, but his successor Vladimir Putin is challenging Stalin in the war crime department. He's faced down several separatist movements in his time, brutally putting down the Chechen separatists and chopping off parts of Georgia and Ukraine. Then in 2022, he shocked the world by launching a full-fledged invasion of Ukraine, attempting to re-annex the country. While the war is ongoing and it's impossible to know exactly what's going on within Ukraine's borders, Russia has become infamous for targeting civilian infrastructure, attacking convoys of fleeing civilians, torturing and murdering prisoners, and kidnapping large numbers of Ukrainian civilians, including children, and deporting them into Russia. Now it's time to talk about the infamous Axis powers. Number 2. Germany Much like its European brethren, Germany's colonial past is bloody, including what's considered to be the first genocide of the 20th century. The massacre of up to 110,000 Namibians in the colony of German Southwest Africa after they were driven out into the desert. In World War I, Germany was infamous for its use of poison gas and for its brutal occupation of Belgium starting in 1914. They ruthlessly bombarded English villages and targeted civilian ships with submarines, but many of the documents regarding German war crimes in World War I have been lost, actively destroyed by the government that sought to outdo them in every way. Yep, time to talk about the Nazis. The Nazis led one of the most brutal regimes in human history, both toward their own people and to the countries they occupied. They were known for massacring prisoners of war, for committing atrocities against civilian villages, and for their campaign of mass genocide, primarily targeting the Jewish and Roma populations of Europe, but also the disabled, communists, and political dissidents. While this began with the German population, they expanded their campaign to every country they invaded, almost obsessively devoting their resources to rooting out these marginalized people and deporting them to a vast network of labor camps and death camps. So why aren't they number one? The Nazis might be the all-time champions in the general crimes against humanity. But in terms of war crimes, they did have a few scruples. Hitler himself had experienced mustard gas in World War I, which gave him a revulsion to the weapons and largely kept them out of the war. And while the Nazis had no problem abusing and killing prisoners of war, they did seem to have some fear of war crimes trials. When they ordered a commanding officer named Roddy Edmonds to identify the Jewish soldiers in his unit, he refused and claimed they were all Jews. That was enough to get the Nazis to back off, and the unit survived the war. But those few mitigating factors would do nothing to save the architects of the Nazi death machine from the gallows after the war. But they might just be outdone by their partners in crime. Number 1. Imperial Japan The Empire of Japan had a relatively short history, but it made itself infamous during those decades. 
While they initially signed the 1929 Geneva Conventions, the government declined to ratify the one on prisoners of wars and wouldn't respect it on foreign prisoners. The government was highly militaristic, and their war crimes started before World War II broke out, with the infamous invasion of China. Taking place after the 1937 Battle of Nanjing in the Second Sino-Japanese War, the Japanese army celebrated their victory by killing at least 200,000 Chinese citizens and brutalizing much of the population. And that was just the first act. Once Japan officially entered the Second World War on behalf of the Axis powers and bombed the United States, they became infamous for their complete refusal to abide by any international standards on the treatment of prisoners of war or enemy soldiers. They would target civilian ships, downed airmen, and hospital ships, and regularly kill captured prisoners of war. Their attack on the United States is argued to be a war crime as well, since a sneak attack on the neutral power is considered a violation of the laws of war. But what truly earns them their top spot is their treatment of prisoners of war. Japan gained a reputation for mass killings of prisoners of war, forced labor, beatings, and most infamously human experiments in the infamous Unit 731, established on the orders of the Emperor himself. The victims, usually either prisoners of war or civilian captives, experienced tortures including testing of biological weapons, vivisection, amputation, and twisted experiments like the injection of horse blood into the bloodstream. This was all done without anesthesia, supposedly for scientific research, but likely just for sadism. It's no surprise that the Japanese rivaled the Germans in most war crime trials after the defeat of the Axis powers. Want to learn more about some of these infamous criminals? Check out Hitler's plans for the world if he won, or watch this video instead.